Pop quiz. What do St. Walpurgis Night, the Christian holiday, the Night of Witches, the Czech holiday, and the Germanic Festival of May Day all have in common, apart from taking place at the end of April slash beginning of May? Turns out they all might be rooted in the same ancient Celtic festival, Beltane. Yes, the reason why people make merry around giant wooden poles every May 1st with the flowers and the garlands and the hallucinogenic tea, uh, wait, sorry, that last part's from the movie Midsummer. my bad, is because, well, I mean it's a fertility festival, isn't it? The phallic symbolism of the maypole at first glance seems obvious. However, there is a school of thought that says if maypoles were meant to represent phalluses, then historically people would have carved them to look more like phalluses, which there's no evidence of. So maybe the maypole's symbolism isn't rooted in fertility, but mythology. Indeed, some scholars argue that the maypole is a representation of the Axis Mundi, or World Axis, a central cosmic pillar connecting the different planes of existence. And more specifically, given that ancient Germanic peoples, like ancient Celtic peoples, considered certain trees to be sacred, it's possible the maypole represents a specific iteration of the Axis Mundi known as the World Tree, with its branches spreading out into the different realms of the universe in its roots reaching down into the underworld. And here's where the theory of a Celtic origin for the Maypole and May Day really starts to take root. I'm sorry. To clarify, this isn't my theory. It belonged to J.A. McCulloch, one of Scotland's most famed Celtic scholars. McCulloch equated the lighting of bonfires on hillsides, one of the, quote, chief ritual acts at Beltane, with the kindling of German need fires, which was a superstitious practice employed by shepherds to protect livestock from disease. The shepherds would use branches to create friction fires and then drive their livestock between them. Incidentally, in one of the earliest written accounts of a Beltane celebration, courtesy of the Irish bishop and king of Munster, Cormac Mac Cullinan, who died in 908 CE, Irish pagans are depicted driving cattle between two druid-lit bonfires to inoculate them against disease. It certainly seems like the German tradition and Irish tradition are one and the same, but McCulloch takes this a step further, speculating that the fires used to perform these Beltane or Proto-Beltane livestock purification rituals were originally lit beneath sacred trees or the pagans would chop down trees and stick them in the centers of the bonfires. Or perhaps wood poles would be decorated with greenery and surrounded with fuel before being ceremoniously ignited. See where he's going with this? To quote McCulloch, These trees survive in the maypole of later custom, and they represented the vegetation spirit to whom also the worshippers assimilated themselves by dressing in leaves. They danced sunwise round the fire or ran through the fields with blazing branches or wisps of straw imitating the course of the sun, and thus benefiting the field. For the same reason, the tree itself was probably born through the fields. Houses were decked with boughs and thus protected by the spirit of vegetation. Source, the religion of the ancient Celts. Of course, it's easy to discern a blueprint for May Day in McCulloch's description of Beltane, the pole, the greenery, the dancing in circles, the hallucinogenic, ah, oh, wait, sorry, almost did it again. But look at me getting ahead of myself here like a bull charging between two stacks of yet-to-be-lit firewood. In order to properly investigate McCulloch's theory, we first need to understand the basics of Beltane and shine a light on why the ancient Celts celebrated it. What is Beltane? Beltane is a festival that was celebrated by the ancient Goidelic or Gaelic-speaking Celts. It marks the beginning of summer and the transhumance or seasonal migration of livestock from winter lowlands to summer pastures. According to historian Thomas Cahill, the springtime celebration was, quote, distinguished by bonfires, maypoles, and sexual license. Source, how the Irish saved civilization. Traditionally celebrated on the evening of April 30th and into the early morning of May 1st, Beltane is a cross-quarter day, meaning it falls roughly halfway between an equinox and a solstice, in this case the spring equinox and the summer solstice. Less commonly known as Quetzalan, meaning first of summer, the name Beltane is derived from the Old Irish for lucky fire or the two fires, according to the glossary of the aforementioned Cormac McCullinan. Flash forward about a thousand years and historian Peter Beresford Ellis asserts in his A Dictionary of Irish Mythology that Beltane actually means the fires of Bel. The Bel in question here is thought to be the Celtic god of life slash healing and possible sun god, Belinus. More about him in a bit. Another camp posits that the festival owes its name to a Lithuanian goddess of death, Giltane, while another camp, this one led by Scottish antiquarian James Napier, argues that Beltane means not Bell's fire, but Baal's fire, and is a reference to a Phoenician god. To quote from Napier's book Folklore, Superstitious Beliefs in the West of Scotland, Baal, Lord, was the name under which the Phoenicians recognized their primary male god, the sun. 
fire was his earthly symbol in the medium through which sacrifices to him were offered. End quote. Can you imagine that? A Phoenician origin for the Celtic festival of Beltane? Scottish anthropologist and folklorist Sir James George Fraser, for one, could not. To quote Fraser's masterwork of comparative mythology, The Golden Bough, the etymology of the word Beltane is uncertain. The popular derivation of the first part from the Phoenician Baal is absurd. End quote. In Fraser's estimation, Beltane has a more secular etymology, one devoid of a divine namesake. And I quote, Beltane signifies the fires of Baal. Baal or Baal is the only word in Gaelic for a globe. This festival was probably in honor of the sun, whose return in his apparent annual course they celebrated on account of his having such a visible influence by his genial warmth on the productions of the earth. End quote. Now, there is yet another camp of scholars who argue that Beltane is derived from an old Celtic word, bello tenya, meaning bright fire, but the underlying implication is the same as with Fraser's interpretation. Beltane isn't a devotional celebration held in honor of a particular god, it's a celebration of light. Or maybe it's both? Who is the Celtic god Bellinus, and did he really inspire Beltane? One of the oldest references to the Celtic god Bellinus comes from Julius Caesar. Yes, that Julius Caesar, writing in his Commentary de Bello Gallico, the Gallic Wars. Granted, Caesar didn't reference Bellinus by his native name. Being the arrogant Roman that he was, he noted that the Gaulish Celts worshipped Apollo, whom Caesar considered to be the closest Greco-Roman equivalent. Apollo is the god of light and the sun and healing and diseases and a bunch of other things, but I have to admit he does line up pretty nicely with Bellinus who many sources consider to be a solar god and a god of healing. What's more, the name Bellinus likely means bright one or the shining one, although that's still up for debate. Some scholars argue Bellinus originally meant something like master of power, which, if anything else, is an awesome superhero name. A cognate of Bellinus appears in Irish mythology as Billa. Known as the life giver, Billa is not a solar deity, but the god of life and death who comes from the land of the dead. Billa is occasionally referred to as father of gods and men and made husband to the Irish mother goddess Dan. Anu, aka Dana, aka Anu, namesake of the Tua de Danan. Actually, now I see more of a parallel between Bile slash Belenus and the aforementioned Lithuanian goddess of death, Giltine. Both are deities associated with mortality, which may or may not be coincidental. And when you consider that Encyclopedia Britannica makes it very clear that Belenus was not a sun god, noting that there was, quote, no Celtic evidence for the worship of the sun as such, end quote, it kind of shakes that foundation of thinking that Beltane and the fires were all about worshiping a solar deity. Regardless of what Bellinus represented, his cult was a large and powerful one, stretching from Italy to Ireland. As a result, many European place names bear his stamp. In London, for example, there is Billingsgate, a derivation of Bellinus's gate. In the municipality of Aquileia in Italy, there's the village Beligna. There's also the Beltane Stone Circle in County Donegal, Ireland, which may have a connection to either the Festival of Beltane, the Celtic god Bell, or both. What's more, according to Ellis, many notable Celtic kings of Britain took the name Cuno Bellinus, or Cunobel, in Britain tonic, meaning Hound of Bell, including the High King of Britain the Romans encountered in 5 BCE. This king would go on to serve as the inspiration for William Shakespeare's character, Cymbeline. All this to say, it tracks that the Celts would have named one of their most important festivals after this god. Bellinus was clearly a significant figure in the ancient Celtic world, even if he had nothing whatsoever to do with the sun. The Christianization of Beltane. Assuming that Beltane, or rather some unattested continental proto-Celtic progenitor of the festival, really was the original May Day that inspired similar celebrations across Europe, one has to wonder, why did Beltane disappear? The answer, of course, is that it didn't. And no, I'm not just talking about the neo-pagans and neo-druids and Wiccans who rediscovered Beltane, but also Christians who unknowingly perpetuated and continue to perpetuate Beltane customs. Remember Walpurgis Night, which I mentioned up top, which is also celebrated on May Eve? Yeah, turns out for centuries, folks have celebrated this Christian festival by making merry around evening bonfires. According to the World History Encyclopedia, Walpurgis Night is derived from the, quote, merging of the ancient pagan celebration of Beltane with the commemoration of the canonization of the Christian Saint Walperga, who lived between 710 and 777 CE. FYI, Walperga was a British-born Christian missionary and healer known for her ability to combat witchcraft. Hence, the fires are supposed to represent, uh, Burning Witches, I guess? Look, the Czech version is literally called Burning of the Witches, Palini Karodejnik, and they don't just light bonfires, but burn giant witch effigies in said bonfires. But there's more to this fiery custom than showing disdain for witches while simultaneously showing veneration for Saint Walperga. To quote historian Javier A. Galvam's book, They Do What? A Cultural Encyclopedia of Extraordinary and Exotic Customs from Around the World, early Christians in this region believed that during Walpurgis Night, evil powers were at their strongest, and people had to protect themselves and 
and their livestock by lighting fires on hillsides, end quote. You catch that part about the livestock? If there was any doubt before, it certainly seems clear now that the ostensibly Christian Walpurgis Night and its regional variants actually began as Beltane-like transhumans festivals. The only issue, of course, is that there is no record of ancient Celts having celebrated Beltane-like transhumans festivals in or near those traditionally Germanic regions. Now, it's possible the Gauls or another continental Celtic tribe celebrated an unattested version of Beltane and then passed that tradition on to the ancient Germanic tribes, but I propose a much simpler explanation. Beltane and May Day, a common origin. Celtic peoples, Germanic peoples, at the end of the day, they all stem from the same people. Proto-Indo-Europeans, a loose network of tribes that originated in the steppes of what is now Ukraine and southern Russia. The study of animal bones confirms that prehistoric Europeans moved livestock seasonally, so it's easy to imagine that for hundreds or even thousands of years before Celtic peoples and Germanic peoples branched off into distinct groups, there was a shared calendar based around pastoralism. Hence, the end of April slash beginning of May had been an important time well before the festivals of May Day or Beltane were formalized. Back then, life itself hinged on transhumans migrations going smoothly and livestock staying healthy. As a result, rituals and superstitions emerged to encourage that smooth transition between the pastoral seasons. Of course, if this proto-Beltane slash May Day really was celebrated amongst the proto-Indo-Europeans, we'd expect to find variants not only amongst the Celtic and Germanic tribes, but amongst other European tribes as well. And we do. Most notably the Romans, who celebrated Floralia between April 28th and May 3rd. The festival, which featured lots of drinking and pleasure-seeking and flower-wearing and gladiatorial games and the releasing of goats and hares and, in one instance, a tightrope-walking elephant, no, seriously, was held in honor of Flora, Roman goddess of fertility, flowers, and vegetation. Animal sacrifices were made to the goddess during her namesake festival as well. Now, here's where the story gets really interesting because after the Roman and Celtic and Germanic versions of the Proto-Indo-European May Festival evolved, each taking on its own distinct characteristics, they reconverged. According to the World History Encyclopedia, Beltane merged with Germanic May Day. And to quote Jennifer Cutting, folklore specialist at the U.S. Library of Congress, the rituals of the Roman Floralia were blended into Celtic Beltane rituals as a May festival, end quote. Thus, the modern May Day, the one that exists in the popular imagination with the flowers and the dancing and the burning people alive and bear carcasses, oh, sorry, again, midsummer, l last time, I promise, is really an amalgamation of different traditions that were perhaps all once rooted in a common proto-Indo-European festival. As for the origins of the Maypole, the jury's still out. But of all the explanations I've come across, this one's my favorite. People started putting up Maypoles because it was fun and convenient for decorating. That's why you see similar structures being used for ritual purposes in ancient India and Northern Africa, as well as in some pre-Columbian Latin American cultures. It wasn't ancient aliens. It was essentially prehistoric party planners from different cultures arriving at the same idea independently. That that idea being, wouldn't it be neat if we took a big log and stuck it upright in the center of the village during our next big bash? To elaborate on this theory in more respectable terms, I'll leave you with the following excerpt from historian Ronald Hutton's book, The Stations of the Sun, A History of the Ritual Year in Britain, in which the author summarizes Swedish folklore scholar C.W. von Siddow's understanding of the Maypole's symbolism, or lack thereof. And I quote, The poles, like the fetching of green branches, were simply signs that the happy season of warmth and comfort had returned. Turned. They were useful frameworks upon which garlands and other decorations could be hung to form a focal point for celebration. If you enjoyed this video, please like and comment and basically just tap all of the shiny buttons and by the end of it, make sure you are subscribed to the Irish Myths channel. That really, really helps. And if you want to learn more about ancient Celtic festivals, rituals, and superstitions, check out my video, In Bulk Explained, Groundhog Day's Celtic Origins, as well as my book, Samhain in Your Pocket, a tiny little book about the Celtic origins of Halloween. My name is I.E. Neverday, editor of the short story collection, Neon Druid, and creator of IrishMyths.com. Thanks for coming out.